You heard Rivio, so I'm gonna react to Downfall Slime Mafia. All right. Bro, that nigga lame as hell. He and content houses never tend to work out in the long run aside from a select few having unity all around is crucial and everyone has to invest in the overall vision of the group slime mafia is a prime example of how putting together dynamic personalities is just not enough in today's video we're going to revisit the beef that ultimately led to the downfall of slime mafia slime mafia was a content creator collective based out of atlanta georgia the group consisted of five active members wire and dj bj groovy say no limit rg and it's Kobe. A lot of OG supporters can remember that Slime Mafia had two Kobe's in the group at the same time. The first of the two was Just Kobe. Just Kobe will go inactive after becoming a father. Slime Mafia was damn near at the top of the group IRL scene from 2018 to 2019, and he had pretty good chemistry. Wire and DJ is a content creator who was considered to be the leader and founder of Slime Mafia. He started YouTube in March of 2016, uploading a sneaker creation video for NBA 2K. DJ went on to upload gaming and IRL videos, gaining a massive following in the span of a couple of years a lot of the community gravitated to him for how entertaining and authentic he was when it came to creating content dj stopped uploading gaming videos around 2018 when the 2k community was at one of its lowest points dj didn't really need gaming to be successful as the supporters watched him no matter what kind of video was uploaded the timing couldn't be more perfect for dj and he was just about to meet two people that allow him to reach a new audience these two people were bj groovy and rg bj groovy and rg began their journey uploading irl content rg offered the and about RG, I um I've been was watching RG before he slime before he even um watch um not watch before he even like joined Slime Mafia. I've been was watching him like uh, like um this this nigga used to like like be copy like Soul Minotti. Like he, he I could tell he was a fan of Soul Minotti. Like the way he talked, the way he moved. Like doing all that simple shit, like, like just trying to take the niggas' words, like so nice catchphrases and all that, bro. Like, I ain't gonna lie, he was a fan of Soul Minotti. Glad with BJ in a comment on one of his videos, but BJ initially declined this offer. A little time will pass, and BJ's friend sent him one of RG's newer videos revolving around an app called Monkey. He immediately DM'd RG to show love. The whole video was crazy as hell. So my mom was like, why this nigga hit me up with this cringy ass shit, bro? Like, I'm not finna link up with you. Not on no Hollywood shit, but just like, bro, like, bro, like, come on, bro. I think like two or three days later, my be uh, one of my best friends in uh, Alabama shot the cute. Uh, y'all, everybody got that one best friend where they, like, you see a funny video type shit, you always send it to him. Uh, Q was on, uh, YouTube type shit, and he sent me one of the RG videos. Mm -hmm. So I was like, bro, this nigga look familiar, you know what I'm saying, type shit. And it was one of his monkey videos. And then I, I had watched it, shit like that, and then it was funny. Like, RG, RG, uh, monkey videos was funny as hell. Him and, uh, his dudes he was hanging with, they had, they, they whole monkey little movement, that shit was funny as hell. I was watching his videos all night that night. Two were fans of each other's content and finally agreed to meet up at Linux Mall. In a conversation that same day, BJ mentioned that he knew Wire and DJ, and it turns out that RG was a big fan of him as well. The two proposed the idea to DJ, and he accepted. Like maybe like a couple days later, we had linked at Linux, and then we had did like a public interview, and then that's how me and RG met. Uh, so and then so later on that day, I told RG that I knew DJ Wire and DJ and shit like that. The nigga was shocked as hell. I ain't gonna lie, hey, nigga, look, he acting like a fan, buddy. Hey, you know what I'm saying? He like, what the f***? I'm like, nigga, you know DJ? I'm like, hell yeah. He like, man, this nigga DJ been on YouTube for mad long, bro. Like, so I've been on YouTube for mad long. Way before these niggas, bro. Captain, Captain. Uh, hell no, I showed the nigga the message. He's like, yo, what the fuck? We got a link to this nigga type shit. So, uh, I think like a 
like two days later, we had linked up with this nigga DJ. DJ told us to uh, push up on him and shit like that. I'll never him. forget that day. Yeah, bro. <laughs> that day, bro. That day was that the funniest, was the funniest bro. shit ever, dog. That's how uh, me, RG, and DJ met. So I reached out to DJ, I reached out to RG, and then all of us came together. While the group posted their early content, Say No Limit watched from the sidelines. After seeing how entertaining they were, he decided to throw his hat in the ring. He hit up DJ with no response, but finally got through to RG, who agreed to make something happen. I pretty much knew DJ was not alone. I've been hit DJ up, like, when I first hit up dude on YouTube. No response, bro. And I think I still have the DM with this nigga not response. Like, when they first started, like, really started linking with each other, they did a video at Walmart, I guess, like, being Walmart workers. Y'all was just acting like, yeah, that's crazy. Y'all was just acting crazy being Walmart workers, bro. And I thought it was my recommend list on RG page. And it's crazy, because, like, the reason why I actually DM'd RG, because he had, like, the, like, the lowest followers, bro. So I was like, hopefully he don't act that much Hollywood. Okay, he had like 4K back then. So I was like, shit, you might fuck around and respond to me. I had like 11, 12, or he had both. So I was like, bro, you might fuck around and respond. So I DM'd the nigga and was like, bro, like, y'all niggas funny as hell. I see y'all in Georgia. Like, bro, we need a link, bro. You feel me? And he responded back to me and was like, yo, like, let's do something. So I think the first time I met, Everything started to take off for Slime Mafia. They racked up millions of views from their extreme prank videos and their fan favorite freestyles. Byron DJ, Byron DJ, on the hoes, on the hoes. Hey, 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 you RG was always the odd man out in many situations. As time went on, he got into conflict with DJ that led to him leaving the group. It wouldn't be too long after RG left the group that he dropped one of the worst. Yeah, I remember that time when um, him and DJ was supposed to box, but he backed out and um, he, he dropped. Before that, he dropped this song, which was trash. But if you look at the like or dislike ratio, it has it actually have more likes than dislikes. It's it's kind of close, but it has it has more likes than dislikes. But it was still trash. And um after that, RG views went down. This tracks that I ever heard in my life. This video got a crazy amount of dislikes, and of course was directed towards Wire and DJ. This left Slime Mafia with only three active members, DJ, BJ, and Say No Limit. The situation with RG allowed these three to get closer, and in time added another member. This new member was none other than It's Kobe. Everything was going relatively well for the group, so well that they decided to get a house together. Like I mentioned earlier, Slime Mafia decided to move in together and collab with other YouTubers. This move marked the beginning of the end. Everything started with Jay, Say No Limit's girlfriend, and Kobe accusing Wire and DJ of stealing $100 from Destiny Oliver, a YouTuber that they collabed with after getting the house. Destiny was visiting as a guest at the time that this happened. Kobe went as far as telling DJ to get out of the house, trying to kick him out. This really made no sense because it wasn't even Kobe's house. DJ went on IG Live while this whole situation was going on, and he accused Kobe of stealing the money with an eerie message. A guest came to, to our house to stay for a couple days. Some shit got stolen, and everybody thinks it was me. When they have no proof, and, and I, I know exactly who it was, but I'm a real ass nigga, bro. I ain't just finna, you know what I'm saying? I ain't finna just put that shit out there. The nigga that literally stole the, the, the shit and started all of this drama shit literally just told me to my face that I have to get out anyways. I have to get out the house anyway. When I pay way more money than you to live here. This nigga right here literally just told me I have to get out of this house. You took the, you took the money in the first place. You took the money in the first place. Leading up to the situation, there were many conflicts that I won't get into due to the truth being very foggy. This involved DJ getting locked up around Christmas of 2019 and having a warrant out for his arrest. If I live with somebody and I'm a part of a group, Slime Mafia, with, with, with people, like these are people that, that are that are my family, that, are, that I'm really supposed to be able to put my trust in. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, these are, are the people that I feel like I can go tell anything to and it won't get out to nobody. As I'm continuing to get blamed and my girl is, like, I pull people that down, I pull people downstairs. Look, people that live here come downstairs. Come downstairs real quick. We need to talk real quick. The person that got their stuff to stay stayed upstairs. But I told them who I was told took it. 
You know what I'm saying? And, and that was it. Like, look, don't let it get back to such and such. You feel me? When I told them who I heard it was, and to please leave me out of this, I was told by both people, my mouth is shut. I'm not saying nothing. It's none of my business. I'm gonna stay out of this. But is that what happened? No, I had left. You feel me? But I don't know when in between the time I told them to the time I left, it got back to the person who got robbed. But basically, the person who got robbed was told by a person that lived in this house, in Slime Mafia house, that I said that one person, another person in this house took it. Which, why would you do that? If I told you to the, to the person that got their stuff stolen face, it wasn't me leaving me out of it. Then I bring you down away from the person that I told you. It wasn't me, blah, blah, leave me out of it. Y'all tell me it's not gonna get back to nobody. Why is it getting back to this person? In early 2020, DJ went on IG Live a few times to call out Say No Limit's girlfriend, along with the rest of the group for pressing charges on him. Say hopped on live himself to address DJ and it seemed like he was talking in circles. You can literally make a nigga career. Give a nigga, hand a nigga a career. And rat your ass out. Motherfucker trying to evict me out of a house that pretty much I started. For the safety of others. For the safety of others was is when, the reason. When they was all down is the reason. Your right. Door. For the safety of others is the reason they're evicting me. But they was all at my door. They was all they was all at my door. Opening opening and closing my door. No, I closed it. They kept yeah. opening it, coming in. You know what I'm saying? Like, we was trying to, we was trying to leave them folks alone. Like, after we had the conversation about the little girl, $100 getting stolen, me and my girl came to my room, and we was done with the situation. You feel me? They came to my door. On oh God, on oh Jesus Christ, they came to my door. When we opened my door, trying to come in my room, like, it's like y'all trying to piss me off. You know what I'm saying? I swear to God, I can't, I can't not make this shit up, bro. These motherfuckers really did that shit. And then, when motherfuckers say, they said some crazy shit, and when my girl trying to jump on them, and I'm trying to move these niggas out the way so my girl can beat your ass real quick. Motherfuckers want to start crying and run upstairs and call the police. So look, first thing first, we about to sit here and address that shit that y'all was sending me in my DMs. Because, of course, I'm not going to watch this nigga live. But y'all was telling me, y'all was sending me his live. So I want to get, I want to hit and watch it. And I laughed. This man is literally telling y'all pieces and pieces, bro. He's not telling y'all the full truth and the full story. But from what I see from y'all sending me a story, he was basically saying, let's make a video. That they was going to make a video about the situation, trying to expose us. My man said he's going to make an exposed video. At this Do point, it. the ball is in your court, bro. Go ahead and make your video, but just know we're going to go ahead and make one back, bro. So. DJ hopped on live in the Slime Mafia house to give everyone the truth about what happened with paperwork to back everything up. The whole day, it had been tension because somebody in the house stole $100 off a guest car, okay? Now, mind you, the guest was a YouTuber. The guest was a YouTuber, and then nobody in the house really know her like that. The guest says, DJ, I think your girl has it. Because we got into it a couple weeks ago. And Jay, uh, my family, my sister, my sister, Jay, my sister, my family, you live with me, right? Jay goes along with that shit and says, yeah, she does have a motive. If she finds out that this YouTuber is here, then it's over with. There's going to be some issues. And I said that for everybody here right then and there. So I guess Jay took it as, okay, this is my time to make everything f***ed up. And just make the whole situation way messier than it could it, it need to be. The YouTuber guest that was here lied and said that the transaction was made in Atlanta. She said that the bank told her that, right? I later on found out that that was a lie. But Jay was going along with that lie. I came out of jail after Christmas. No food, no phone call on Christmas. My friends got me locked up. My friends... The, the day I get out of jail, my friends, Chaz, y'all see that? Chaz, y'all see that? Can y'all see that? Chaz, Chaz, your boy say, has evicted me 15 days for defendant to leave premises due to safety of others in the household. Oh my God, I'm a bitch, I'm scared of wiring DJ. Don't, don't get it twisted, don't let the social media shit fool y'all motherfuckers is talking shit about each other on the low behind each other back damn man y'all niggas y'all niggas live on the same roof and y'all talking mad shit about each other damn it's a lot of weird shit going on and i don't know who to trust i don't know what to believe i don't know bro 
response to DJ's live stream, DJ Groovy and Kobe dropped a diss track on Wire and DJ, basically choosing their sides. On top of this, Satan Limit appeared in court trying to get DJ removed from the house for safety reasons. The whole rap out here, bro. Bro, everybody is here, bro. Everybody is here. That's crazy. That's crazy, y'all. They all here to f tell the judge why me being in the house is not safe. I can't, I, I just can't believe this shit, bro. I cannot believe this shit, bro. She got me shaking right now, y'all. Oh, God. I can't believe all of their asses in there, bro. I woke up late as hell. Y'all see the fit, though? This is what I'm wearing to court. These niggas got trench coat suits. These motherfuckers had text messages printed out and shit. This nigga came in with fucking right, tuxedo on and shit, man. This nigga made for this shit. He made, he, he, he love, bro. He made for this shit. I'm telling y'all. The live right here. Nigga has screen recorded the live show. Show, hey, he showed the judge and everything. These niggas some rats for real. I already knew I was gonna have to leave, like, leave eventually. Man. Court was an eye opener. That, that's all I'm gonna say. This one, everyone thought it was done and over with. Kobe completely trashed wire in DJ's room when he was gone, breaking his monitor and kicking a hole in his room door. He admitted to doing all of this in a recording. In this bitch right now, you feel me? You're gonna see my shit really broke. And just go from there. Hell, I don't know what I don't know what else to do at this point. Shit. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, he broke though. Man, that's crazy as fuck. Y'all see it, man. Y'all see it. I can't, I can't make this shit up. He ain't break nothing else. They trashed my room. When he gets here, he's already pissed. He's not gonna want to hear nothing that we're fucking talking. He's already coming at us because he thinks we did it after what happened between Jay and Devon. I was gonna try to tell you, nigga. You think he's gonna sit there? We open the door and be like, look, bro, Kobe gotta go ahead and tell you some shit, bro. Nigga, he's not hearing none of that. I'm trying to tell you, nigga. I'm trying to tell you, bro. And you know damn well you be the same as that way. If you came into your room right now, your whole computer is me, y'all. Because your whole TV is smashed in right now. And if you think it's somebody, you literally think the person gonna sit there and be like, bro, go talk to that person right there, bro. You want to own up to it. Nigga, you're not gonna want to hear none of that shit. I mean, I don't know what the f you want me to do. The nigga blocked me, so I don't know what the f you want me to do. I told him. You have his number? Yeah. Well, I, I think I got his number. His new one. Just call bro, I'm not doing that, bro. Don't ask me to do that shit again. I'm not, bro. Hey, bro I'm not worried about none of that shit. Bro. He's so you it makes it even more right that you go downstairs, kick his door in, and smash his door. Like, it's too late to say, like, what the fuck? DJ had enough of Kobe's BS and exposed a few things from his past on IG Live. Kobe attempted to deflect all the hate he was getting after getting exposed and told DJ to pull up. Sandra is really over there popping that shit. I can't believe Don't even talk about her because I actually like Cassandra. I like Cassandra too, but she she was over there. Cassandra, talking. Cassandra, baby girl, you just need to cut ties with that. That, that nigga is a lame ass nigga. You don't need to be associated with him. I understand you just trying to step up your nigga. But he, you gonna see that that's not just your nigga. Son. That's, you like, 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 they're, like. Literally, one of my exes, he was just f***ing, bro. Etch in your bed. It all started because Kobe is broke and he can't get a Nike. Right, day. all of this Look. happened because Kobe wanted a Nike safe yeah. from the f***ing Nike. You see, you see my drippy ass purple right. that she bought me. Right, I bought my, that my shit. My girl bought me that. The you seen that shit, you told me it was five. You told me my bitch that was five. Oh, he said he had to go cop one. That's what you did. Took a picture of some, of some bitch card. That's how this all started. Bro. Right, that's how it all started because you're a broke ass nigga. Stop. You're a bum. That's why it started. Okay, I was fighting aggravated assault case for the nigga. This is this is what he's fighting. Bro, a Walmart case. He's fighting Walmart cases. Cause this nigga stole a f***ing tie detergent a, from Walmart. Wash the detergent cause he broke, bro. Bro, he been stealing. Ah oh, man. Come on, Kobe. You're getting sued by Walmart for how much? You're getting sued on fifty bands. For fifty. Fifty. Was it fifty or five? Nigga, you're getting sued by Walmart for stealing some shit. So let me know how I ran. Because I was in the one that cost 12, it was Jay. So uh, DJ won't fight me, bro. I literally been like hitting bro up, like come back to the crib. Like, like I'm here at the crib. I hope y'all know that shit. Like, I'm here at the crib. They're still saying you're rat, but they're not telling me Exactly, how. like, how like. You? Just say how. That same day, DJ decided to pull up to the Slime Mafia house to confront Kobe. Keep in mind, this entire altercation was recorded as it happened. Daddy's home. Yeah, bit, man. Kobe, come downstairs. Kobe. Bro. Kobe. I don't know. I 
watching this video. Come downstairs, bro. Come sit here. No, we no. Not come sit here. No, we don't. We not. No, we didn't. We didn't come here. Hey, look who we got. Come here. Look. Come here. Look who we got. Look, here. look who we got. Look. Look who we got. Look. No, look who here. here. We not here to do nothing. Look who here. 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 Where's Cassandra? Where's Cassandra? We not trying to fight. We not trying to fight. Come shoot the ones up here. Come on. Who's trying to fight? Come up here, bro. Shoot the ones. You a pussy, bro. Shoot the baby. Come on, shoot the baby. Come on, come on, come on. 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 Come on, come The police eventually got involved after someone upstairs called them. This is one of the main reasons why DJ... Gave them the name Rap Mafia. When the cops arrived, Say No Limit, Kobe, and BJ went on live, giving them an entirely different story of what happened. This is this lame ass. We kicked this nigga out the house. Bro, listen. This man is putting holes in the wall because he's getting evicted. He's coming here causing problems. He's coming here causing all these problems. Why did they just call the police to our house? Why did they call the police? That's why I want to know. What was his reasoning? Man, listen to me, bro. I'm gonna tell y'all just how it is, bro. This nigga keeps trying to talk about we snitching this and that, bro. This nigga has the police at our house right now, bro. He called the police at our house, bro. But we snitches. But we snitches. Come on, bro. Then he trying to make money from the situation. He got his camera out talking about something he working. Bro, that nigga can't do no videos without us, bro. That's why he up here pulled up out our crib with a camera out. Bro, this whole ass nigga is pepper spraying. Bro, I want my fade. This whole ass nigga is pepper spraying. Bro, everybody want their fade, and this nigga is pepper spraying, bro. Nigga scary, bro. Come on, dog. What he called for? After DJ dropped part two of the truth about rap mafia, BJ Groovy dropped a video of his own squashing everything on his end. I'm gonna be a man to come on here and speak some real shit, bro. Slime mafia. Man, we had one hell of a ride, bro. I just hated how it ended, bro. I'm really disappointed on how it ended. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm low key disappointed with everybody. You know what I'm saying? Because we really. In this line, mafia on some petty shit, bro. Like everything, all this is petty, bro. Like all this could have been avoided, but you know what I'm saying. Everything happens for a reason. The man above know what he's doing. You know what I'm saying. He, he put, he put all of us through this for a reason, bro. I feel like slime mafia. DJ didn't really say say much on the situation. It is top ten. Do y'all think, do y'all think so? Comment down below. Fat, we was lit. There's a couple of lit groups out there that hit YouTube, you know what I'm saying? But I feel like we were lit, bro. We, we, we in the top 10 for sure, man. On some real shit, bro. I want to thank, thank that nigga DJ, bro. To be 100. I know that nigga probably mad as hell right now, bro. <laughs> I know he mad as hell right now, probably. You know what I'm saying? But like I said, bro, I'm going to come on here on some grown man shit. I just want to say thank you, bro. You know what I'm saying? For um, giving me an opportunity, bro. A lot of y'all don't know, but... When I met DJ, he had like 240K, you know what I'm saying? And he had that little 
you know, the 2K wave, where you play 2K and shit like that. And I used to watch them too. DJ, bro, I know you don't even want to talk right now, but look, like I said, bro, I appreciate you for giving me a chance, taking me under your wing, giving me some of the knowledge that you had. Because when I came into this YouTube game, I came in by myself. I ain't know nothing. So everyone went their separate ways, but DJ focusing more on music and his individual content. On August 27th, 2020, we will receive bad news. Kobe Nunez, known online as It's Kobe, tragically lost his life in a motorcycle crash in the early hours of the morning. Former members and supporters came together to honor his life and to pay their respects on social media. No matter what some people may think about him as a person, no one deserves to lose their life so tragically. Slime Mafia was officially disbanded by this point and this sad event was an eye opener that life is too short to hold grudges especially about something petty as a hundred dollars you can forgive but never forget fast forward to 2022 everyone affiliated with slime mafia has left the group in the past in my opinion slime mafia has so much potential but couldn't handle simple problems like adults they were truly on a come up and many took this group for granted but life goes on there is one life lesson to learn from this all good things must come to an end Okay, that's the video. Um, so yeah, let me know what y'all think, bro. Like, um, what y'all fucking think on uh, about Slime Mafia? You know how how um things ended with all of them. Like, who's your favorite members out of Slime Mafia? Say, DJ, BJ, or RG, or Kobe. You know, who's your favorite members? Let me know down. Alright, make sure y'all like, comment, subscribe. Y'all know the vibes. We'll be checking out you are.